When I discovered Prince Edward was turning 60, I thought this would be a really good opportunity to take a closer look at the man, the husband, the father and, and his work. Prince Edward, um, I kind of think, is a rather steady Eddie character. Now that was a nickname given to the Duke of Kent, who was the Queen's cousin, the late Queen's cousin, but I think it's equally appropriate of Prince Edward. He's someone who's really chipped away at the coalface, just going about his duties with not a lot of fanfare and not actually seeking the limelight. And I can imagine for someone like the King, given recent events, that's quite a blessed relief. In recent years, we have seen the monarchy accidentally slimmed down in a way it didn't expect to do. We've lost Harry and Meghan and Prince Andrew. And those royals that are working at the moment, with the exception of Edward and Sophie, and obviously the Prince and Princess of Wales, they're much older. We have a younger generation in George, Charlotte and Louis, but they're not going to become working royals for, for 10, 20 years. So of course the spotlight and the weight of expectation is going to fall more heavily on Edward and Sophie's shoulders as the monarchy recalibrates itself behind the scene and works out how it's going to move forward. And having spoken to Edward personally about this, I know this is something that he is actually really enthusiastic about. He's got causes that he's really passionate about and he feels that he can use this new, more dynamic role as a way to shine a spotlight on them. Well, one of the things that actually struck me first was actually how much <laughs> Prince Edward is now looking like his father. He really suddenly morphed into the spitting image of Prince Philip from the turn-ups to on his trousers to the, the way he clasped his hands. And uh, suddenly there was a much older man sitting in front of me, but with his mother's um, very fine features, he's a real mixture of the two. He's definitely like a, a Prince Philip in terms of personality, uh, in the way he likes to shivvy up events. Um, uh, certainly like that, and obviously he, he's inherited not only his late father's title, Duke of Edinburgh, his work with the Duke of Edinburgh award scheme, and, and, and one friend said to me, that definitely wasn't accidental. Um, you obviously had a situation where King Charles was always going to inherit the throne, you've had Andrew and Anne, who were often considered some of his mother's favourites, but Prince Philip clearly had a very soft spot for Prince Edward, his youngest son, and had marked him out from a very early age to inherit his ongoing royal role. Edward had a particularly special relationship with the late Queen. He was obviously her youngest child. And what's something he's really held dear is that she was able to have a particularly special relationship with his children, Louise and uh, James, that she wasn't able to have with some of her older grandchildren because she was traveling around the world as, as head of state. They were children that were born later in life. And I've been told by uh, some sources that she even got the chance because they only lived a short drive away from her at Bagshot Park when she was at Windsor, that she'd even pop round and sit with the children and watch Mr. Tumble, which is a very popular children's program in the UK with them. And it was very special for him and for them to have that kind of relationship with her. Both Edward and his wife Sophie, the, the Duchess of Edinburgh, are very protective of their children. Uh, that's why, of course, they don't have HRH titles. They're Lady Louise and, and James, who's now Earl of Wessex, but they are not HRHs. And both have made very clear there is no expectation for their children to follow them into the family business. Uh, Louise is currently 20 and she's studying English literature at St Andrews. Uh, James is 16 and he's about to do his GCSEs this summer. I'm told that actually Edward has a very special relationship with James. They share a real love of the countryside together. Um, James is very comfortable in that environment with his father and that's something they could see him pursuing when he's older. I mean, I think like a lot of these, these royal cousins, there will obviously be uh, a willingness to help out the monarchy in whatever way they can, but I'm not sure we'll ever see them becoming full-time uh, working royals. Well, as part of my profile, I was really keen to get an idea of what Edward is like away from the cameras, away from the spotlight, as a man and as a husband and as a father. Now, it probably won't, um, uh, surprise uh, Daily Mail uh, readers and viewers of this programme to know he, he, he doesn't throw himself off buildings in his spare time. Uh, he, he, one of his closest friends says to me he's, he's a demon skier, 
but not a very flashy one. He loves uh, walking in the countryside on his own. His, his idea, I think, of daring is, is slipping away from his police protection minders to go walking on a beach with his spaniel mole without them. But also I heard some fun things, like he, he set himself in a, a target of playing in every real tennis court in the country and also around the world, which he's achieved. And I'm told he's also inherited his late father, Prince Philip's talent with the barbecue. And the minute he uh, gets the chance to, he's actually out there in the dark with a head torch on, uh, flipping burgers and marinating meats. And he's got a real reputation within his family and friends for that. I think a great example of how low-key Edward can be is a, a friend who told me a story who holidays with him fairly regularly and that he, he, he pitches in with every family member, does the barbecue, makes the sandwiches, even goes down to the local co-op to get the supplies. And on one occasion, a member of the public approached them and said, gosh, you really look like Prince Edward. But they didn't actually believe it because he was acting so unlike they would imagine Prince Edward to be. Um, another uh, person I know who's worked with him for many decades tells me he actually often turns up to royal engagements on foot or on the tube. And I can tell you, in royal circles, that, that's fairly rare from a security perspective, if nothing else. And while they were a bit surprised about it, first of all, they said actually they'd become quite used to it because it's just the way he is. He's very unfussy about the way he goes about his business. It's just an, another example of that. So I spent a day following Edward around on his duties because I think if you're going to write about someone and to create a profile, you need to see them in action. And it's not something I've had the chance to do much of over the years because his, his engagements don't get that much publicity. And during the course of those engagements, I really got to see what he was like as an operator on the ground and actually was even able to speak to him for 10, 15 minutes about his role uh, within the family, uh, His Majesty's cancer diagnosis, um, how he approaches his job, and also this, having the support of his wife Sophie, what it's meant to him over the years. And that's one moment I, I felt he really, really lit up. And you could see how much having a, a wonderful, supportive wife and such a stable relationship has meant to him, uh, enable, enabling him to do his, uh, his duties over the years. And it started at King's Hospital in London, where they've got a great volunteer scheme with the Duke of Edinburgh Awards. And what was great was Edward arrived with so little fanfare, you, most people weren't aware he was even there. Um, and he rolled up his sleeves, he donned a plastic pinny to go around and, and serve lunches to people. He just wanted to talk to as many people there who were benefiting from this service as he can. And there was a, a wonderful moment where he sat down by a lady's bedside and this, bless her, this elderly lady who was suffering from dementia still recognised him and was so excited by the moment she proceeded to tell him about how when she was a child she went with her sister to Buckingham Palace to see the late Queen and got her head stuck in the railings. And Ed was a good listener and he kind of listened to the story as if it was the kind of story he'd never heard before and made her feel so very, very special as a result of it. And later in the day, we went to um, a youth centre um, where he was mobbed by young people as part of his work as patron of Youth London. Um, and what was funny was a lot of these kids knew he was royal and they knew he was a celebrity, but they didn't really know who he was. And there was a great conversation with these girls saying, so, oh, so you're, you're the queen that died, that was your mum, oh, we're really sorry, sir, in the way that kids do, and asked him what it was like living in a royal house. And then one of them said, well, so if you're Edward, who's Prince Harry? And he kind of smiled and patiently explained that he was actually Prince Harry's uncle, as he was William's uncle, uh, and just wasn't phased by any of this and talked, about, talked with them about everything from trampolining to kicking a football. Um, he just took everything in his stride.